who's not here, so I'll be acting chairman 531-ish. Call the meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Is the Zoom thing recording now? We yes. I think okay. we are. Sure. Cooking. All right. I guess we'll roll right into uh, Super Long updates. Yeah. We'll keep it uh, pretty short. I was actually out for a week and John took over, so he may actually have some uh, updates. Actually, can I jump in, Frank? Sorry, oh, I missed right We've got one set of minutes to approve, apparently. Um, are you in there? I just want to check the date. It was April 12th. It was April 12th. Thank yeah. you. So move to. Do um, you want to go ahead and make the motion? And then I uh, I'll move second. to uh, approve the uh, minutes April of the 12th. April 8th. April 12th. Eight, April 12th, 2022 um, meeting minutes. Uh, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we'll go back to superintendent. Okay, right. Sorry about that. No problem at all. Right, let's start off uh, with the water main flushing. <clears throat> it seems to be the, the topic right yeah. now. So actually back the last meeting we discussed that we were coordinating the flushing program with two different tests. One was going to be a fire hydrant flow test yep. on Mansfield Ave. The second was actually going to be a fire pump test on Leonard Street. So April 18th was the night of the holiday, I believe it was Patriots Day holiday. Um, the hydrant test was coordinated with our department, went off without any issues. That was the start of our spring flushing program. Um, once that test was completed, we actually moved the crews that were out and jumped and actually operated many valves, essentially cutting the town almost in half with our isolation yep. valves and distribution system. Um, some of the sections of the town were fed from the water treatment facility, others were fed off the storage tank, and that allowed crews to actually perform something similar to what we did three years ago, which was a, a very aggressive flushing program. Um, but basically we had uh, guys that started in the center of town at a Carter Street booster pump location um, running both of our pumps with our storage water were able to flush um, a significant amount of water uh, through quite a few different areas but um, in the first week alone which was only the four nights because of the holiday I'll give you a brief description they did um, all the trunk lines basically the main trunk lines on the main roads, the biggest mains. So all of Mansfield Ave, um, Freeman Street, West Main Street, Cottage to the center of town, East Main Street from the center of town to Leonard Street, all of Leonard Street, um, portions of Pine, Plain, and South Wash in that first four nights. Um, serious flows, 3,000, 4,000 gallons a minute, multiple yeah. hydrants open, you know, doing the leapfrog as I previously had explained. It's, is the smoothest transition you can have from hydrant to hydrant. You know, partially having one closed down while the other ones open up. It's right. it's a heavily coordinated event. Um, we had operators from the water treatment facility work with our flushing crew guys at night, and we actually had our primary treatment operator in manually operating the booster pump valves oh. and off your cell phone using a SCADA. <coughs> so we had continuous monitoring of the system just like we did three years ago. Everything went off without a hitch. Um, nice. The water was dirty longer than we expected, but wasn't as dirty as we expected. So How do we deal with thing. calls? We get any calls from residents or very few? A couple, a couple of a couple of pop-ups, but uh, and they all cleared up pretty quickly. I mean, the, the water that we're dealing with is so much better than we've had in the past. Yeah. So even the <clears throat> the flare-ups that we do have, they they clear up way faster. Yeah. Cool. It's it's impressive. I said it many times. I know people get tired of hearing it, but uh, you know, ten. You know, 10, 15, even five years ago, we couldn't have done something like we're doing now um, without the whole town, you know, being an uproar. Right, right. Um, so leaps and bounds. We still got a ways to go, but uh, we're definitely going in the right direction. Do we know how much actual water is used for that whole process? Do we put a number on that, or we do? Um, we usually calculate it after we've uh, we've had about a week's worth of run. When we run the boosters, it's very difficult, so we have to look at tank drop. We have to look yeah. at operational run times at the wells and they all change depending on the pressure drop in the system. So there's a, quite the calculation that goes on for that. We can get a very close average yeah. on what we have. Um, 
that is about the most inaccurate portion of the flushing program. Other than that, when we're out doing our isolated flushes, we have gauges on every hydrant and we calculate the flow based on time and flow. Mm -hmm. So we have a chart that we fill out for Mass DEP and our own records um, to indicate water used for That's flushing. That's what I was wondering if yep. they have what their rules are as far as how much yep. water you can or should use. There's they kind of they give us a guideline. Yeah. Obviously, you don't want to deplete your storage if you can't right. re return it within a certain amount of time. Now that we have temporary well 5A online, you know we have no issues with yeah. that either way. Thankfully, knock on wood, um, you know, we haven't been able to do this in, in two years. So we anticipated some some dirt, some sediment, some issues, and uh, you know thankfully it's it's better than what we expected. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so that all falls in line with um, cost savings for our tank cleaners when they come around. Because if there is sediment out there, a lot of times it ends up in the storage tanks. We have to pump that out right. and pay to get rid of that when our tank cleanings come around. So it, it's going to slowly improve with everything that we deal with. Um, so during that first week, like I said, we had, uh, we had crews out from the treatment plant with our guys doing the flushing. As we move them, people, to different locations in town, we will um, basically go back to our normal SCADA operation. The computer is going to run the system yep. and react accordingly, which is what we want because it also proves that the system works correctly. It proves we get any alarms or anything in, all of which that we simulate and we test. So we test our, our alarms you know, weekly, quarterly, monthly, and it's done by physically changing a level in the computer. The computer recognizes it. It sends an alarm, goes to the phone, goes to another computer. But to have an actual physical event happen that you can watch it happen in real time, you know, if you're on your SCADA system on the phone watching the tank level drop, you can change that set point level to a false low level. Yep. You can see it hit that. You can see the, the timeout happen. You can see it achieve, call the, call the log. Yeah, nice. So in, in, in a real scenario, you know, plus it gives you options if you wanted to set up. We have our booster pump station set up in reserve. You know, in the event there's a major break or a major fire, you know, it'll happen before we even respond. Right. You know, so we even set those up and have those put to be in automatic. You know, we'll have it set on when the tank hits 17 feet, booster one would come on. Yep. You know, so we can see everything happen in real time to make sure, you know, it's just a way of working out bugs. Yep. You know, it may work perfectly a million times in a row, but that one time you can catch it when it's not during an emergency, you know, it's worth, it's worth everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've run... All of our booster pumps using storage water, we replenished our storage water, um, taking care of that. So as the crews move a little bit further away from the center of town, moving to some of the smaller mains, um, as I said, the SCADA system is going to run with that. Um, crews are flushing Sunday night through Thursday night. That's their differential so that they can actually have a, a decent weekend. Um, as we get to some of the isolated areas of town, a little bit further out, the older areas of town, as Steve was mentioning earlier about a, another community with limited gate valves. We are also the same way in our older sections. Yeah. So to isolate certain areas of town, it becomes quite a bit of a challenge. Sometimes that's when you can see a little bit more of a disturbance happen because yeah. you can't flush the entire area that you've isolated, which it sounds foolish, but unfortunately that's just what you deal with with yeah. an old town. Um, so we'll deal with those issues as we get to them. We know the problem areas. We know how to attack them. And uh, if we have to put a couple extra people on that night to have a little bit more uh, disperse in the water, we'll do that. We have the water, we're going to yeah. use it. Um, that's that's huge, too, having to do it over and over and know where the typical problem areas are yeah. to, to have that information. Yeah. I mean, that only comes with experience. I mean, until you've had your, your, your boots underground, your hands on a hydrant, you right. know what's going on. You know, it takes, you can put as much as you want on paper and try and explain it to somebody, but even if you get and do everything right on that paper, it could something could change in the distribution system that you're unaware of. You know, somebody could have turned a, a valve, you know, four months ago, and it's not open all the way. Right. So you find those things out by doing your flow calculations. If you see a hydrant that can't achieve what you think is a normal flow rate, you know, you, you make a note of it, leave it for the day, guys. We'll go back and investigate a few things. Right. You know, a lot of times, by changing the sequence of how we do the flushing program, which has been done more times than I can even think of. Um, we found isolated valves that were buried and closed just by coming up with different scenarios. You know, we right. don't really want to try and go to the same hydrant you do every year in a row. Some of them you have no choice. That's the only, right. only right. one you can flush, the only one the water is going to go to. But you still go back and try and do the other ones, make sure that they're operational. You know, and that's when you 
usually run into something that just doesn't make sense. Um, so we actually have a few of those that we're going to determine this time around that we found during the aggressive flushing program. We didn't like the flow calculations that we saw. doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It just could right. mean that there's a smaller section of pipe in a, in a stretch of road that we're unaware of creating a change in volume or right, a change right. in flow. So we want to make sure we exhaust all of our options. You know, and it may not be a problem. It just we want to make sure we've yeah. addressed what we think could be a concern before we just dismiss it. So a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes, you know, a, lot of, a lot of feet mm -hmm. on the ground to figure things out. Um, the other test that I was talking about that was scheduled as part of the flushing, the first week of flushing was the fire pump flow test yep. to verify a brand new pump that was installed down on Leonard Street for a commercial building. Um, that was scheduled for April 20th. It was not able to be completed. Okay. Uh, there was actually an issue with the pump controller. Um, so they had to order some pots and they had to reschedule. Because of the nature of the test, that's one of the ones that's required to be posted in the newspaper. Okay. So they were able to achieve the post in the paper, um, and they actually completed that test this morning. Oh, was it okay. 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock? Uh, 9. It was early. Um, we, they did a three-stage test, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 gallons a minute, um, 24,000 gallons in about 13 minutes. So it's uh, it's not the biggest pump in town, but it's, it's definitely one of them. Yeah. Um, again, knock on wood, no issues. Um, very close to the plant. We didn't even see a blip on the radar. Nice. So that's the kind of stuff we like to see. This this is all a testament of the progress that the department has made, oh, in my eyes, over yeah. the past couple of years, you know, certainly since I've been around. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's uh, like a night and day. You know, yeah. Still striving to achieve the long-term goal where, uh, you know, you can turn anything on in town and not have an issue, you know, whether it be a fire pump or a hydrant. But, you know, each town has their own little areas that always have that little, that little niche that, yeah. you know, you're always going to deal with no matter what you do. And uh, you know we're doing everything we can to, to work those out. Um, so now that that pump test was completed, we're actually going to have to redirect the crews back to that area because we didn't want to move them there ahead of time. You know, basically waste our water or waste yeah, their water. Sense. You know, sure. We couldn't achieve the flow rate that they did in that location, so we wanted to make sure the fire pump was done first. You know, that velocity will never be achieved from the pumps at the water treatment facility. So now that that was done, the surrounding areas have been affected. Now we'll come in after and clean it up, even though it didn't appear to be dirty. Hopefully it softened anything that might be in the pipes, and that can be removed. Um, so that would actually be what we call the, the Bay Road Loop. So there's a okay. water main that goes through the town forest out to King Philip Road, loops back around to Bay Road, comes down and connects to Plain. So okay. that's a loop basically around the water treatment facility. Yep. Um, that will be addressed, and unfortunately, the fire department was actually down there the Saturday before we started flushing. There was a fire down on one of the side roads there, house I fire. I remember hearing about that, yeah. Um, so, again, no dirty water. It could have already been flushed for the water that they used, yeah. but we're still going to go through there and you know, perform the operations as we normally do yeah. um, with that. Uh, one thing we may do, as we've done in the past, we found it to be a, a huge benefit is actually to uh, perform some daytime flushing on the side roads that were left by the night crew. So um, 120 West Main, for example, um, we spoke with the coordinator there. We had guys out there that flushed four or five hydrants inside that development this afternoon. Um, it was one of the locations that we used to strategically put water. They have the woods behind their property. We used that when we did the major oh, flush. Okay. Um, but instead of wasting time with those other hydrants, the crews moved on, kept going with the trunk line, and we'll go behind them and clean up, do little side roads and spurs off of it. Um, we've done that before with good success. <coughs> it allows the guys at nighttime to continue moving on the trunk line. Um, we do leave them a little bit of a buffer. We, we tell them to basically make a list of some of the side roads, so if it's coming up and they have you know 35 hours in, and they're there on their Thursday night, they wouldn't want to start a new trunk line. Right. Go do some of the side roads, you know, choose yeah, your time wisely, sense. make sure you're putting your time in, but don't get into a situation where you're going to get jammed up. I mean, it, it does happen, but if you can try and work around it, because it's there Friday night, even though it's Thursday. Yep. You yep. It's bad enough you're there till 3 in the morning, you don't want to be there till 5. Yeah. It just, you know, so we work with them, make sure everything's coordinated as best as possible. Um, notices have been going out. John's been uh, handling that with uh, Norton Neighbors, I believe, is where most of it's going, as well as our websites. Um, we do still have to work with the fire suppression companies during the day, doing their small sprinkler tests. I know John has a few of those that he's been working to set up while I was 
out on vacation, so those will be posted in the very near future. I believe might be a couple coming up next mm -hmm. week. Yeah, I think there's actually two Friday morning. Okay. Um, again, the smaller tests really have no impact on yeah. the system as they used to. Um, it's more of a formality to make sure that it's posted to let people know, especially if you're in the immediate area. You know, you may notice something right away, mm -hmm. uh, but we've seen no major impacts to it. The only benefits of being there, we, I guess, I think I mentioned before that our backflow failure rate has decreased, and that's, in my opinion, it has to contribute to the flushing of the fire service lines that typically in the past would be turned on or shut off just so they can move on to another test. You know, we, we make sure they're flushed out till they're clean, there's no sediment. You know, it's, it's a win for everybody. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that is all I have after being out for a week. That's all good news. It like is. <laughs> this map behind you guys, yeah, I notice it's hard new, to see. New uh, blue lines on um, That is what we've used for our flushing map for many years. The blue lines is the areas that has already been flushed in that time period. Okay. Um, some of the side roads obviously are not on there because the map is kind of old. Right. Um, but we've used that multiple years, and, and it's a good indication of... Uh, the amount of work that they've done just being yeah. out there in the short period of time that they've already done that. So, sorry. I don't know if you had anything. Uh, we um, submitted both our annual statistical report to DEP and yep. our consumer confidence report to Gemini for, print, for printing. Um, those are a bear, so it was nice to get those yeah. finally done with. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of combing through records and um, reporting things and uh, got those done. Got our new lead and copper sampling plan approved by DEP. Um, got that in the mail end of last week. So we'll probably be uh, because we we were on reduced monitoring once a year, thirty samples a year. But now that we put well five A online. Um, even though it really doesn't change the water quality, it's still coming from the same aquifer. Right. It's kind of a formality that you have to go back to um, not reduce the standard monitoring, increase monitoring, yeah, which is twice a year, 60 samples. So I, we had to submit a new sampling plan. Um, like I said, that was approved. We'll probably, I think, um, we had an operator pick up our sampling bottles this week from the lab. So. Those have to be done by the end of June. I'm sure sometime in May, beginning of June, we'll, we'll get that done. So, okay. other than that, it was pretty. Once once we get those big reports done, it, it definitely uh, definitely spreads out our effort yeah. a little better. So, yep. Okay, good. Those reports do annually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the ASR needs to be submitted to DEP, and then um, the CCRs more about educating the public about what's in our water and um, how we disinfect the water and things like that where the ASR is kind of more how much get how many gallons were pumped how many people we serve mm -hmm. how many breaks we had right. more statistics for lack of a better term so um, but yeah those are the the um, ASR is usually due and um, end of March, early April, and then the CCR is just when you want to have it printed, so we always go with a early June print date, so it was due last week. Okay. So. Yep. Right. Excellent. <coughs> um, do we have, are there 196 minutes still have on the Zoom, or are they? Are they no, I think they're coming. Are they I think they're outside. Okay. 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 It's an open meeting. Are you in the How are we doing? I am, yes. Okay. okay, we're pretty much ready for you whenever. Okay, uh, Elias will be here soon. I apologize. So oh, sure. Okay, that's no okay. problem. You can move to the amendments if you, you want. You want to go on that first and we'll come back to them? That works. So, <clears throat> amendments on sewer regulations. It looks like there's two proposed amendments. There are actually three. Um, there are two um, amendments for as far as, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not specs, but um, 
requirements? Yeah, requirements of uh, okay. equipment. Um, okay, so the first two are equipment requirements, yeah. the second one is the, the, not the, necessarily equipment, but Yeah, the first two are procedure. type of a, yeah, uh, equipment used um, while digging, and the third one is mostly about um, how contractors need to act and <laughs> better follow the rules as far mm -hmm. as when it comes to digging. Um, yep. We've had people coming in, um, you know, uh, tying in a line to the main, then leaving the, leaving it, leaving a stub for six months, going and tying it into the house without letting us know what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we kind of we propose that. Once you start an excavation, you have to, I believe it was five days, to finish the excavation without authorization from us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, without, um, you know, obviously no backfilling before it's been inspected by a sewer department employee. That happens, so we obviously okay. don't want that because um, we'd have to have someone dig something up, especially, you know, not knowing if it's right or wrong. That's just to be able to inspect um, it before they fill exactly, it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, and then we have some people call the morning of a dig and say, can you have someone down here to inspect? And sometimes we don't have the personnel to mobilize mm -hmm. to, to get everything done. So anything like that, we ask. It says seven days here. We can advance. That That's yep. also, I believe, it's either in the reg somewhere else or it's on the actual sewer, sewer permit. Um, so we have a sewer application. Permit, we do. Right? We do have a sewer application. So this permit. is where you want to put this verbiage. It's in there as well. Okay. So um, also that it's also in the sewer application permit that they have to provide a proposed drawing in and as built drawing. So that's okay. which not everyone does. So that's a reinforcement of that. Um, and as far as the two. Um, Equipment's not the right word. I don't know why the word I'm looking for is... No, the, the two products here. I, 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 yeah, specs. Yeah, specifications. Um, they're both... Uh, one is to help with I and I in the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though it's a for force mains, not gravity mains, it's still it's it's a really good product that helps them tap, tap the main, have no leaks. Um, and it's just a very clean... Okay. Clean, easy. So how do we do it now? Uh, What's allowed now? Let's put it that way. I'd have to look at the. I'd have to look at the rigs. Honestly, I think you can use a tapping saddle. Tapping um, saddles have been common with um, most of the connections are done even if it's on a low pressure main with the old style core core bit and drill. Um, you know, messy. You know, you don't get a clean. Not, not something you do under pressure then. Like you would this. Yes, it can be done under yeah. pressure. And it's messy. Okay, not something you want to do. <laughs> you don't pressure. want to do it. Yes. The, this I solves understand. a lot of problems, um, mainly with the cleanliness of the hole. So you're going to have, yeah. if you go through with a hole sore, even on a good pipe, on, not under pressure, you're still going to have burrs around the inside right. of the pipe mm -hmm. that right. leave a potential hang up option. Um, this here, you know, basically shaves the side of the pipe. Yep. So it doesn't actually remove the coupon, but it actually results in a small amount of shavings that come out, yeah. almost as if you would take a small grinder and work okay. on the edge of the pipe. Okay. Um, so it's a completely smooth bore transition um, that goes into the pipe. Um, it's similar and not similar to the Fat Boy Inserted T, where it has a full gasket that goes installed on the on a different style of pipe, um, but you know. Are these spears. guys the only manufacturer of this style, pretty much, or these yeah. spears? Right now, this is the only company we found um, that we've seen in operation. Um, we will have, I believe it says, and or equivalent. Yeah. So if someone finds another type or brand that right. will or do the job, that's... Yeah. Are they readily available, or probably yeah. not? Oh, yeah. 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 No, yeah, yeah. they're... they're um, and they're actually relatively, um, relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Um, so, so this is a rhetorical question. There are taps into force mains. Yes. Is there one on Newland Street? On, on that force main? What do you mean? From uh, Pump Station at Red Mill Village to Newcomb? Is there any taps on that, that force main? Oh, yeah. Mm. There are. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. The new houses that are going yep. in closer down to Daggett Grandel, yep. those are all tapped. 
And I believe it was on Newland Street that we first witnessed this being used. Okay. So uh, okay. that's why we really liked it. Yeah, we have our small group of general contractors that we often deal with. Now that there's been some additional growth in town, um, we've seen more contractors, newer contractors, that have used different technology, which is how we stumbled across this. No, I like it. It, it is a, great a, a very nice project. And it's yeah. all stainless no, like um, it. bolts. As you said, it's, yeah. um, you know, we got to reduce II and we got to make sure we prevent leakage mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, you know, it's a better, cleaner yeah. way to do it. Yeah, the cleaner transition that you have is going to be a benefit for the homeowner so there's less chance of having any type of hang-up, mm -hmm. um, you know, leaving a jagged edge going right. into the pipe. You know, it doesn't matter if it's, right. you know, coming in at 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock, it, it's still a potential for something to get hung up on. Maybe it shouldn't have been flushed in the first place, but, you know, if you can avoid all of those what-ifs, it's just a better product for everybody in, in the end. And the uh, the new curb stop, or it's probably not new, you've been using it anyway, but you want to only use that stop, right? Uh, yeah, that has the, uh, it's stainless, stainless and it has a swing check valve yeah. uh, built into it. So um, that kind of makes it dummy proof. Yep. Uh, it, that's yep. really nice as well. Um, it's just like for our fire hydrants now, we have spec all stainless steel but you know that's that's really the way to go um, yeah I mean with the corrosive nature of obviously the material that you're dealing with here to have mm -hmm. something that's rebuildable yeah. you know 20 30 years down the, down the road you're going to assume that this company's still going to be in business you know instead of digging down and having to sever that pipe and manifold something in you know you can unbolt this and yeah, right, be in and right, out right. of there within a small amount of time yeah that's uh, great yeah. yeah I mean you know they uh the the insertity fat boy that we had had previously that Frank mentioned that yep. had been approved that's been really good um, for gravity mains like Frank said that's kind of got more of a gasketed insert to go into the pipe mm -hmm. uh, where the um, the hot tap saddle bolts around the whole pipe right, and then you right. do your drilling but um, so the insertity is basically going to be for gravity mains or yeah or yeah we're yeah. Yeah. We're, we're just trying to get yeah, eliminate all awesome. yep. leaks and I and I in the system yeah. and um, just I, reliability in general too yeah yeah know? no I think that's all great and so we're looking at two product approvals for the regulations of this I guess would be procedural um, change to the sewer application yeah to add the add the verbiage um, that may or may not be there and um, it would also be in the regulations as a secondary form of backup. Um, as part of the sewer application, they are, it is requested that they understand and um, have read the regulations, but uh, we all know that that's not always the case. So now when they get a sewer application from us, they're going to have the sewer application, they're going to have this front page with all the new amendments on it, and then they're going to have literature on all the products that we're proposing. That, that they have to, to use. So okay. um, that um, way anyone who <coughs> anyone who fills out a sewer application can't say, Oh, I didn't receive this information. Yeah. So Okay. I, I guess we gotta do this in three different motions. Probably, probably. It's probably simple. Yeah. Okay. You wanna do the motion, Steve? I'm not sure what motion actually make. Well we're oh. gonna move to to require these two as products in installation. Yeah. And we're gonna move to require to approve the um, verbiage, verbiage change for the sewer tie-in application. Okay, and why is it highlighted in green? So it stands out. Okay, so yeah. I make a motion to uh, modify uh, or revise the sewer regulations and sewer application to include a Spears PVC and CPVC hot tap saddle or equivalent with prior approval of the water and sewer department. I uh, second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I now make a motion to revise the regulations and sewer application to uh, revise the sewer fourth main tie-in with a lateral connection 316 stainless steel curb stop swing check FIPT assemblies for PE and PVC pressure pipe applications are equivalent with prior approval of the water and sewer department. Uh, I second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and, I move, and I move that for um, 
also a tie-in to the modify this is to modify the verbiage and regulations and applications or application. And also a tie-in, any tie-in must be completed within five business days of the initial excavation. There will be no tapping of the sewer main and leaving the stub for an undetermined amount of time to finish the connection at a later date. No backfilling will be allowed without being previously inspected by a sewer department employee. Whenever any excavation is expected, the contractor must schedule an inspection with the sewer department no less than seven days in advance. When applying for a sewer permit, there must be a proposed drawing included with permit, and an as-built drawing must be provided at final inspection. I second the motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Seems very progressive. That's good. I like that. <clears throat> um, are you guys uh, 196 minutes for lab? All set, or are we still waiting on Elias? Yeah, I, I can start without him if you, if you like. And he, um, okay, if he's going to be along soon, we don't want He wanna... said 605, so four minutes. Okay, yeah, if you want to start, that's okay. fine. If you want to just. Uh, I can actually pass out some stuff too. Um, we made some modifications okay. um, that we sent earlier. I know you highlighted this. We actually. Um, kind of hard to see, but it's in color too, so uh, for the, we did blue for the water line, and I have another, I have four copies if you guys want to. This is fine for the blue. Oh, okay. okay, you can see the blue. Thank you. Okay. Is this, um, this, I am, so you're fine, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess state your name, okay. you're sure. um, whatever. Uh, for the record, my name is Casey Birch, I'm a civil engineer for Soli Engineering. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, um, Norton Land Ventures <coughs> LLC, uh, to discuss this uh, proposed flex warehouse facility uh, located at 196 Mansfield Ave. Okay. Um, just a broad overview, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the project uh, at this point, but we are proposing a 100,000 square foot uh, flex warehouse building. Um, we call it flex because it, we're, we designed it for potential multi-tenant use, um, which is why there's parking on either side, on the east and the west side. Um, all the loading dock, oh, actually let me grab, sorry. Let's put this up here. Oh, okay. So we have um, all the loading will be uh, down on the southern side, along the southern facade. Um, there will be entrances on the uh, north uh, east corner and the north west corner uh, at this moment. Uh, we do have access off of uh, Mansfield Avenue with a 40 foot wide uh, side drive. It's about 200 feet north of the Auto uh, Par International um, okay. side drive, which is to the south there. And then, so what we're proposing uh, for water and sanitary, I can go with that. Uh, we are proposing an eight-inch loop around, a fi fire loop around the building uh, with two uh, hot taps to connecting into the existing 12-inch main within Mansfield Avenue. Um, we, as part of the loop, we do provide four hydrants in one in each corner. We have uh, coordinated with the fire department. They are, they are good with our locations of the hydrants. Um, and they also requested that we put the fire uh, department connection uh, in this vicinity, which is the south east corner of the building, and that's pretty much where our utility room is and where everything okay. else is coming out. And that's driving uh, your sprinkler system and all cor that. Correct, yep. Uh, and then the, the sanitary line's pretty basic. It's a six inch sanitary gravity main that goes out to an existing um, stub in Mansfield Avenue that comes into our site, and that was that mapping is on the other side of here. Um, We'll field verify it during construction, but we do have old mapping that shows the uh, what is it? Where are we here? So I'm just trying to get my bearings on this. Oh, right here. Yeah, right in the yeah the, the, this, uh, so that's what we showed on our plans, and we are tying into that existing uh, stuff for sanitary. So pretty straightforward for a building this size. Um, we do have a uh, domestic line coming off the, the loop 
Yeah. That's what I was just going to ask. Yeah, yeah, you've got water the, in the building, obviously, too, right? Correct, yeah, and, and fire, and fire yeah. suppression in the building, correct. Um, those are located also in the, the uh, southeast corner of the building. Well, they'll be coming into it in that location. Um, obviously, if that changes um, with what other whatever tenant comes into this, we will come back to you and let you know. And yeah, we want to find accordingly. Yeah. What size domestic is going in there? I didn't. Uh, I may have seen it. In um, yeah, actually, we didn't call that out because okay. we, we don't have it. But it's probably between it's two yeah. most, most likely. But um, yeah, we we were trying to keep that vague mm -hmm. for now until until we get actually uh, mm -hmm. somebody interested in this in this area. Mm -hmm. so. Now, with the basic setup that you have on the other drawing that was there showing, you know, the uh, basically what would be a warehouse, what is the minimum you would install as far as bathrooms, wash down areas, stuff like that? Do you have any of that information? I or? do not. Okay. I, can, I can definitely. Okay. Once, uh, so we have a design build team working on this now um, for the internal at Arco. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Mm -hmm. um, but we should be getting uh, MEP plans. Okay. Um, in the near future. I mean, we've already started working on our construction drawings ourselves, um, but we have not received those plans yet. Okay. Yeah, the site connections seem pretty basic and not, yeah. not a big deal. Um, you know, we obviously would want to make sure that that domestic line is specced accordingly, which you'd figure out with your calculations. Right. Um, the only thing that was noticed, I think I mentioned it in one of the emails, was the separation on well, what we would call the right side. I mean, it may be the rear. Mm -hmm. um, north, I think. Yeah. The, north the separation side. between the what appears to be drainage and the water main is down in the seven foot range. Right. Um, so you require ten from drainage as well. We like to see ten. Okay. Um, if it's not possible, you know, obviously we work with you guys and, and we'll come up with something. Right. Um, there's actually two lines in the regulations. One covers and states six foot from other utilities. The other one after that was added later um, indicated a ten foot separation. So right. you know, we're willing to work with you guys, you know, to come up with things. Obviously, um, the further away, the better it is. You right, know, right. We're very concerned about Direct Berry Electric being that close. We've seen problems with electrolysis and things like that. Okay. Um, so as much separation as possible. If there's a restraint, obviously we understand. Right. Um, is there anything limiting going on another three feet well, on that? Well, there, there is drainage on is each side. Um, this drainage actually... Graphically, it might be showing a little further out. It is the, um, this is the line for the actual downspouts of the building, okay. which can be probably closer to the building. Okay. Um, we're just showing them graphically out. So, yeah, we can, we can probably move that in and then definitely get a separation for, um, along that entire corridor from that. Um, this one where it crosses here um, is probably going to be an issue because it does run parallel at an angle um, and it kind of runs, you know, so we are crossing two locations there and, and here. So. But if we could get it out further over here, that would limit the amount that it's closer. That would be better than. Yeah, we could we could run it we could right? run it along the outside. You're running into in this area. There's a, a wall mm -hmm. on the on the northern end. Um, but if you if you'd like, we could we could even probably switch this manhole over and have this. Um, and have this be close even to the building too, and then put the yeah. water line in the outer. It's outer not why it's already seven nine. We're talking yeah, two feet three it, it inches. Varies, it varies in different locations. Yeah, it does, yeah, it and changes. It, and it is drainage. Yeah. So I mean, okay, drainage you know, is part. We we weren't sure on that, so I'm glad I got confirmation you know, on that. But we can definitely work with you on that. You know, it's a it's a it's a funny spot because it's private property. It's never going to be town accepted. Right. But we want to make sure that it's installed so that in the future anybody doing work on it, if they understand our regulations, they go out there and dig. Right. Well, that shouldn't be here because it's not 10 feet apart. Right. Yeah, right. We just, it's all about cautiousness in, in the future. Okay. Um, you know, we would hope that the proposed plans would stay with the warehouse and everybody would know exactly where everything is, but you know, we all right. know how that doesn't work. Right. Um, the biggest concern, other than that separation there, which really isn't a big deal, yeah. is verifying that stub location for the sewer. Right. Um, there is a potential, even though those plans have been very accurate for subs that we found in the past, yeah. um, if that's off by a little bit, we want to make sure that you keep the minimal separation there at the 10 feet. Right. We actually um, separated it a little more. I did notice it changed yeah. from the original. Um, so yeah. hope, hoping, you know, just to avoid that. Just the whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing would be putting the two hot taps in. We've seen issues in the past if the hot tap was installed too close to a spigot or a bell end on the pipe. I'm sure you guys right. know exactly what we're talking about yep. with a failure. So um, 
that may nice. also uh, be a good spot to do a couple test digs. Right. You know, verify that you're not within a couple feet of the end of a pipe or a joint or possibly even another tap on the back side of it. Right. Um, okay. Just, just all about nobody wants that to, to have a failure, you know, right. a year down the road just because, you know, we didn't spend a little bit more time there. Agreed. Um, okay. You know, so that could change. It may it shows 12 feet now. It may end up being 13 feet. Right. You know, as long as we get a final as-built plan. Um, we'll have inspectors on site, and obviously I'm sure you guys will have people out there as well, but, mm -hmm. you know, if a field decision has to be made like that to move it over a couple feet, right. you know, we're not going to hold you up from doing it. Okay. Um, and then, and there, like I said, there, there's room to do that yeah. in that area. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know how much of a waiver you were getting or a variance you would get for the road opening from the state, so. Um, oh, yeah, that's, you know. that's true. We are still working on that. Um, they are at the 100% um, mm -hmm. review on that, and... Uh, I'd have to double check on that. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like you're near any curb cuts or anything like that that's going to really hold you up. Um, so it shouldn't be a big deal. It should be pretty easy for them guys. But it is the state. Right. <laughs> you require uh, tape to be put over the pipes? Yes. Know, because it isn't in this. I don't see it on your detail. Um, it may be on it. I just let me check. check. I think there's... Um, let me just add it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll double check. But I think the trench tape. detail... Yeah, so when you bury a pipe, you oh, put okay. it... Oh, okay. So you yeah. see the, the, the detective tape. Yeah. Detective yeah. tape, so yeah. that when you're looking for this stuff, you can... Uh, okay. It's easy enough to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we have copies of our construction specs. If you have obviously bed in sand or, or a similar type material. Someday you know, somebody will thank us for doing that. You would think. <laughs> Someday. It probably won't be us. <laughs> our next generation. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, guys. Oh, no, no problem. problem. Welcome. Traffic was more people. <laughs> <laughs> Is this electric um, going to be buried? Yeah, that'll be under. Yeah, it's not overhead. Is there? I'm just curious as to why you brought it instead of more to the south of the building. Is there nowhere? Th I think there's a, a utility pole in that location okay. that would tie off yeah. from. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, the state they don't want you to go at an angle mm -hmm. on their road, so you have to go perpendicular. Yep. Take off. Yeah, and then, right. and then yeah. snake it through yeah. your property. Yeah, they right. don't care they about don't that. Care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we were good on the flow test, right? So thanks for doing those, by the way. Yeah, no, that, everything uh, worked out fine. There is, um, I don't have the numbers. Do you remember what they were off the top of your head? I but think I printed it out. I don't. You got to be all 1,200 gallons yeah. a minute. Yeah, 1,250. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, should be no issues with the water down there. What do you show, it may be here, and forgive me if I didn't read it, for are you going to encase the concrete? Is it going to be sleeved? What, what are we going to do for the separation where it goes over the water? It's a, it, we usually do a concrete um, encasement, okay. um, but if you guys have specific requirements on, okay. on that, we can, we can do whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I actually defer to you. You've seen a lot more than we have for... I mean, it's going to be high, high with voltage. With the double pipe, I've seen it with concrete. He's talking about electrical going over. For the electric, going direct battery electric yeah. going over. Mm -hmm. Concrete cases, no that'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Um, can we? Do you have any more questions on this, Steve? I'm all set. Can we approve this then, pending the proper location of the? Yeah, that that'll be done yeah, as, that'll as be part done. of the field that's inspection. Field so that's inspection. part of the field. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, any major changes, they would want to come back before us if for some reason there's a boulder there and you can't do yeah. something. Right, and that can even be done in the field, but okay. based on what's presented to you guys, I see no reason why it can't be approved as is. So if I, you want to make the motion. Yeah, um, I'd say you can go ahead and make the motion. I, I'm, I'm fine with everything. Okay, I have to the uh, water and sewer connections as proposed on the uh, for the Fleck Warehouse at 196 Mansfield Avenue, Newton, Massachusetts, based on the plan dated uh, April 19, 2022. Um, labeled site utility plan. I second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. See how easy that was? Yeah. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. I, I have another Thanks copy. For us on this. Oh, sure. I have another yeah. copy of the, of, with that revised plan. Okay. For a full plan. So that's actually. Oh, sure. You. Appreciate it. All right. <laughs> stuck in time. Yeah, you stuck in time. Yeah, easy. All right. Thanks, guys. No problem. Thank you. Sorry you had to be stuck in trouble. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> well worth guys. it. Thank you very yeah. much. Best of luck to you. Hi, Tara. Hello. How's everybody doing today? Doing all right. Doing good. Yeah, I messed that one up. Sorry, you had a problem. Where'd you come from? 
Reading mask. That one's color? No, I, I like that color. color. I don't know what that looks like. Down. Okay. Oh, uh, that, that place to live. And I probably should just work out a box car today. I was surprised to see you drive all the way down. Uh, I had papers. Oh, boy. Good. I have a question. Yep. Before we really get going. That ARPA meeting we had? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did understand that James said he wanted to reimburse all the funds from ARPA for Well 4 to the auction class money, right? I mean, from auction class money to to cover all those Well 4 expenditures that he had originally done on the ARPA. Okay. Yep. I was just making sure I didn't hear that incorrectly. Just well four. The well one should stay. Stays on the ARPA. <coughs> well one and Knollwood and uh, Holly Road are ARPA, and then four, five, and six will all be put in the option clause. That was being a confusing. He thing. was, yeah. He was, yeah. Anyway. It was good to have a call, so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Steve is not with us tonight, I guess. Are you doing his stuff, the sewer, or are we just skipping that? Two Steve's are not doing Yeah. So, Steve, Steve was, was not going to be able to make it anyway. He was maybe going to call in, uh, but actually there really wasn't any sewer updates. Okay. So I know, I mean, you already voted on the sewer okay. information, so uh, we can call him if you have any questions, but otherwise I think that um, there really hasn't been any changes in the last two yeah, weeks. Right. He, he and I had talked earlier in the week. Um, you know, right when I got back, we talked about a few different things. He was looking, um, he's working with the town on the municipal uh, complex for finding connections for sewer. That's kind of taken up uh, quite a bit of his time. Okay. He was he was away the same week I was. Yeah. Um, we had a quick meeting with Mike Units and a few other people yesterday to discuss that real quick at the end. And um, he's really kind of putting more time in than he needs to on that. Yeah. But if we get additional grants or additional funding, it'll all be worth it. Okay, cool. That's, that is why he is not here tonight. He's enjoying at least one of his uh, events with family. Awesome. <laughs> Good for him. Let's talk about water then. All right. So, uh, as we briefly mentioned before, we did have a meeting last week with the town manager and the town accountant. Uh, we talked about the ARPA funding through town slash county. The water and sewer department is going to get some funding through the actual county funds. Um, that's going to go towards the well one study we've already completed, as well as the two generators at Knollwood and Holly Road, and then also the uh, Wells, um, oh, well, actually, no, sorry, the uh, East Hodges and, and South uh, Worcester. Worcester Street. I was going to say Washington, but definitely Worcester. Um, so that was good. We confirmed all that. Right now, uh, the town hall has all paperwork that they need. There's nothing more that we need to provide at this time. Everything's pretty much going to be fed up to the county uh, to confirm that that uh, funding is available. And then we kind of switched over to the uh, Congressman Auchincloss special projects, which were, um, we received an email a couple months ago indicating that, well, maybe it was only a month ago, but indicating that, that um, the Wells 4, 5, and 6 project was approved uh, for that special project. So that's about $1.45 million or so. Um, the question really from town hall is when that money will be available from the federal government. So that's not really on our end yet. Um, uh, hopefully that's sooner than later, but we basically uh, are moving forward um, with, with all the projects. Um, the town, at, at the time when we put together the warrant, the intent was to use um, existing funds and rearrange uh, different accounts, but it was basically decided at that meeting also that we'll continue to move forward as it may not be uh, the federal government, could certainly take anywhere from one month to who knows how long, uh, to issue that, that, that funding. So. The intent would be to move forward the way that we've proposed all the warrants uh, for that, um, uh, the work for five and six construction as well as well four to proceed further with the, um, the construction and inso actually say installation of the actual well itself. So uh, do the test well, um, the actual, excuse me, um, full, uh, full well uh, pumping test and move that forward. So um, if at the, you know, fall town meeting, that would be when we would actually adjust all the different accounts as needed at that point and reimburse any that were spent previously. So. I think we're in good, good standing. Um, there are no other pockets of funding that we heard about, so at this point, um, either way, I mean, it's all free money from the federal government, so all excellent news yeah. for the water and sewer department overall, but um, we just wanted to confirm that we weren't holding anything up and that it is just um, you know, checks and balances on, on the uh, federal and state side of things. So um, we'll keep you posted as, as information comes forward, but I don't, currently the town manager is trying to attempt to get some and just on timing, and we'll, we'll keep everybody posted on that. 
Um, the only other project really that's kind of moving forward uh, is the Wells 5 and 6 replacement project. Uh, we're still waiting for a contract uh, schedule from the contractor, Dankers. Um, once we have that, we figured it'd be best to have that in hand before we set up a pre-construction meeting to kind of go over the whole project. Uh, that's usually based on schedules when everybody starts to have questions. So we've approved several shop drawings already, sent that information back. Basically, that's what they were waiting for to make sure they could start putting their purchase orders together and start getting dates on the calendar for all the delivery of the equipment. So um, they have submitted a pay estimate number one. We sent it over to uh, Frank earlier and then noticed that we did need a few more signature lines for the commissioner, so we had that modified. It's a very um, basic pay estimate just for um, basically bonds and insurance. Um, so it's, uh, you know, in the amount of $14,535. So I'm presenting that for um, for approval for, by the board uh, today. And sure. I've got four copies for signature. Um, and again, this is a pretty simple, basic uh, pay estimate, but um, we're holding a 5% retained, which is pretty standard. Uh, they've invoiced for bonds and insurance. The total contract value is uh, $583,300. But again, they're only requesting payment um, as of today, uh, for fourteen thousand five hundred thirty-five, just to kick off the project. So we're voting on the fourteen five thirty. Fourteen thousand five hundred thirty-five. Thirty-five today. Yep. Okay. And that's for pay estimate number one. I have a question. Go for it. Going to throw a wrench in everything. Uh oh. Oh boy. That money there is going to come from the auction clause money, which isn't in place yet. But yep. we have funding in place and leftover funds from the well five and six project. Correct. Do you know if we should pay that down using that and then reimburse the account with the auction plus money to keep everything level and keep money and cash flow going to Dankris? Would that yes. be what you would recommend? Definitely recommended okay. and I believe James is on board okay. with paying any accounts. Any invoices that come in, he'll transfer as needed that's once that funding. That's all good. That doesn't institute any new red tape or no, anything. Kind of no, I just yeah. that's what I anticipated would happen, but I wasn't part of that meeting, so I just wanted to see if that's what Tara felt you know, we should move forward doing. You know, we have additional funds in the well five and six account that's still remaining because again, as she mentioned, we had funded this up to a point. Right. And then we were going to be going to town meeting to adapt ask for the final funding phase. Yep. So there's definitely money there. We don't want to hold up to Anchorage at all. We know how difficult it is to get parts. You know. Um, yeah, no, let's, you know, let's let's keep them moving let's as keep long moving, as we have absolutely. funds to do it. Yep. And that's a great idea afterwards. Okay. Yeah, no, it, it, and then that was previously set aside when we signed the contract with, well, I should say the town signed a contract with Dankers. It was confirmed that there's enough funding in that mm -hmm. existing account. It was more for Well 4, and Well 4, we have a signed agreement for just kind of phases 1 and 2, which I believe were $60,000 um, for services. Uh, we had talked internally about potentially putting the next phases 5, uh, I should say 3 and 4 together, but um, we'll... we'll if we have a little bit more idea of when this might start, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll provide a contract for the next steps. But right now, if it does happen that four is on hold for six months or so, we're going to probably hold off because we don't yeah, want to sign any so. contracts that early either. So, um, so we're kind of waiting a little bit on, on timing-wise. And, and we do have a, a contact, at least through uh, the congressman's office, that hopefully they'll have a little bit of a more direct connection with um, when the individual projects will be actually funded. So. Okay. So yeah. So that's uh, for the first payment for for Dankers, right? So do we approve those? Yes. Yeah, we you do. Yeah. 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 To approve fourteen thousand five hundred thirty-five dollar for payment number esti payment estimate number one for Wells Five and Six replacement project, dated April fourteenth, twenty twenty-two. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We uh, do all three of these, obviously. Uh, right? I think there's four there. Oh, actually, all four of them, yeah. Um, where we just write where it says is approved by. We have the full copies yeah. now. Today is the 26th. I figured right? I'd just take one with me then. Yeah. And I'll write that on the cover sheet here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's on? Three, three to, to, three to one to done. 
far as the that's a good question. Does Steve Bishop has to be on this too? So historically, as long as there's a quorum on this, but it's up to you guys if you want to get a. We can acquire his signature yeah. if it would keep things cleaner and. Then I'm going to delete that. We did not get a copy of that. <laughs> Thank you. And then the other project was White Street. Um, we're ready to go. Okay. I think you guys said you didn't have any additional comments on the I don't think plans. we have any. I mean, um, we're still talking with the developer for that corner lot. Mm, okay. Um, depending on the timing, it would depend on where they would look to connect. Um, but they have water and sewer available. They're, they are going on the larger lot closer to the corner of 123 in Newland. Uh, right. So the, uh, the options would be for them to connect to the main um, on Newland, not on White Street. And if we had to provide a stub for them to switch them over at a later date, we could do that as well, if it's going to be in the portion that we're replacing. We can we can work that in as maybe a chlorination tab and do that at the last change over. Mm -hmm. So a couple yep. little, little things in the field. Or, but, or Newland up, uh, right. up for wraps for that. Yeah, whatever's going to be easier. I don't know what the layout of their land's going to be. I, I would assume they're not going to take the trees down on the 123 side. Yeah, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned, I think the last meeting, um, it's all about delivery materials. Mm -hmm. It's a small quantity of means, about 1,100 feet or so. Um, it's possible that a larger contract has that available or wants to go, but otherwise it'll be kind of up to, you know, whenever pipe gets delivered. So feasibly that will be all set up before a contract is awarded and, uh, and also installation starts. So we've, we've got some time. Yeah. So. But I assume you, just, you guys didn't just survey the property, right? Out there, right? We surveyed the street. We didn't. We don't survey the actual. No, but we, uh, that, you, didn't that do, you didn't do that recently, though, right? Uh, I mean, there were surveys out there like last week. No. No, no. no. We were out there. So that must have been for the. It was still it's been the, the end of this last fall. So they must have been surveying the property for the lot. Yeah, must I've have seen been. multiple people. Because there were uh, traverse oh, points all over White oh, Street okay. in the area. Just to let you know. Sure. Yeah. Nobody else would notice that. By the way. <laughs> 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 I mean, I was you're not out there moving. <laughs> Yeah, you haven't seen any plans or anything. Like I that. have not seen anything on that. Do you have any idea what they're proposing to put? You know, a house. It was supposed to be a house, which I'm very surprised. Yeah, I didn't think anybody was building on yeah. that lot. It's really a horrible lot. Yeah, yeah, it might be a good dentist office or something, yeah. a law office or something, but uh, whatever they want to put there. <clears throat> um, all right, are you all set then, Dara? I think that's pretty much it, unless there was other questions. With the White Street, is mm -hmm. there a better time with what you're dealing with with other clients? Have we seen interest in small projects, or is it really nothing right now? What do you see well, what going on? Well, job with? It's really not that small of a project. It's, well, uh, uh, compared to some projects, it, it is. It's 1,100 feet. Um, uh, you know, I, I think that overall, uh, it's a nice project to fit in between other projects. Yeah. So if somebody's ordering some pipe and they've got 10,000 feet and they want to put an additional 1,100 on there, that's not a huge, yeah. I think that overall, um, for the benefit of the town, the best thing that we were recommending before was to just put a, you know, completion data, say, you know, sometime next summer, uh, versus having them forcing them to try to get done this winter before the winter sets in. So if it's roughly six to nine months out, if the pipe delivery, you know, certain contractors have better connections with certain other suppliers and, and when they can get their pipe first. So um, at this point, um, you know, giving the flexibility of that is really the main goal. Here. Um, and um, it, it is relatively something that feasibly could be done in three to four weeks. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not a huge project, but um, it is, you know, something that there's a lot of work out there right now. Okay. So whereas we had, I think we had almost 20 bidders on Pine Street. Yeah. I'm not sure if we're going to see something like that. Okay. But Pine Street was about 7,000 feet, yeah, so that big. was a pretty decent project. Yeah, yeah, so a month ago, I, I call a contract to have a job out for bid. Yep. A month ago, they were all interested. Great. Fortunately, I just put the job out last week. I'm not so sure anybody's interested oh, in that. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing is, honestly, week to week, day to day, uh, it's, yeah. there's a lot of money coming in through, as, as we're receiving, or the town's receiving for ARPA, um, there's, a, there's a lot of money out there so, uh, to go towards all this. And, and the biggest thing is, Staff and materials are, are the shortfalls right now that everybody's dealing with. So. Okay. The job I put out is just asphalt. Hopefully, I'll get some interest. Wow. Yeah. We're really looking for the bigger, better deal. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing I had was um, having a mental 
what the name of the telecom company that owns the cell towers. Oh, the cell what, tower what is going on right. with them? They're terminating their contract. And I have a copy of the letter Steve that was we received. To remove that stuff. Um, we've looked. I should say Brooke has taken time and looked through. This is a copy of the actual letter that we received. Um, it is addressed to the Water and Sewer Commission as well as the okay. town manager and the select board. So they want to. Can I get, can we get a copy of this in email? I can get a copy of that. Yeah. Um, there is wording in the lease agreement that is going to be reviewed by the town manager and possibly even go to legal. So some of the wording in there indicates that there was a performance bond initiated back when this started. I believe it may have been 20, 2010 or, or 2009, back when they first went onto that uh -huh. tank. Um, and it's it just the one downtown tank, right? They don't have anything on they do. the street? They do? Oh, I don't know if they have anything. Um, but that's not the one that they're looking to remove, okay. at least not right now. This is the only letter we've received, and it it's, pertains to the center tank or 63 yeah. West Main. Um, and there was also a removal bond, and it's only $5,000. So Meaning that if it costs more than $5,000 to remove it, they don't do it? They have the option of walking away after 30 days and leaving items there, according to what I read in the contract. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's not the case, yeah, and hopefully there's other that. legal requirements on them. Um, I remember when we took the old center tank down, the original tank from 1911, yeah. um, most people abandoned their items in place because they moved to this newer tank. So there was no reason for them to come and take mm -hmm. it down, it was done away with as part of scrap. Yeah. Um, that included the concrete buildings that were below it, everything. Um, this is a different scenario. I don't, in my time that I've been here, I've never, I can't say I never, I, I don't recall anybody ever leaving a cell tower equipment and just abandoning it. There's I've no seen cell tower equipment abandoned on smokestacks, active okay. ones that are still used, with old cell tower structures where they don't have active sit on there and they've left it there. That, that's why when I saw that, I was like, oh, they don't get a picture of leaving, but we let them. <laughs> so are they breaking you know? the contract? They are. Well, they're, they're breaking the lease, but yeah, contract, What's lease, same lease thing. What's their lease term? I honestly don't know. A lot of them are like five years, and then they auto-renew for five more yeah. terms. Yeah. So I I believe Mike, uh, mm. I spoke with Mike Units. He said he was going to go through the... So it's not up to us whether or not they break the contract or not. That's no, not, that's somebody else's problem. That's completely on them. If they want to, they're able to. No, them being. I mean, uh, they. Okay. I mean, we. Sh I mean, I mean, if we're responsible for honoring the contract, then they should be. Whether or not they stop using their equipment or not, they should fulfill the contract and give us. I, I believe they would cover the remaining portion of the contract and then some. But the concern is more about the equipment being left yeah. on the tank. Right, but that this doesn't say anything about that. No, yeah, this, this only addresses the financial aspect yeah. of things. It doesn't. So, so have you seen something else to identifying what they, other than the five thousand dollar agreement? It's all in equipment? in the lease agreement that's sent to town hall for review. So have you talked uh, to anybody with these guys? I have not yet. No, okay. that was. So we just got more or less got that. This is just it yeah, exactly. So um, <laughs> kind of a shock. Hopefully more information so, will come out of that. Yeah. Do we get any revenue from that at all? We do. Okay. We get decent. Oh, they said there's yeah. 12 months rent termination fee, so we're going to receive a separate payment for the 12 months. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why. Why? What that means? It says that it will receive a separate payment for the 12 months rent termination fee. I don't know what the word termination fee means. Mm. That sounds like a fee if they terminate the contract. Yeah, it sounds like I know, but I have to see that the contract is. Yeah, there's no way to from this yeah. letter. The question is, are we going to maintain and still have the rent due, whether or not it's terminated or to the end date? I think they have the right to terminate the contract as long as they follow through with the certain guidelines. I believe one of them is paying the 12 months yeah, that's termination, right. termination yeah. fee. Okay. So, so if they, they nice terminate, to see the, nice yeah. to see the rest of the document. That gives not you the opportunity. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, the opportunity to obviously cover your budget for that fiscal year, because if you're going to take this as a revenue loss, no, 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 I you need to make that somewhere right. else. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand that. And how much equipment do they have on this? 
well, without I pulling out the, the paperwork. They they pick amount. up a quarter of the tank. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of equipment up there. So the cell tower it's near... The quarter that you look at facing from the yes. industry, too. So the cell tower near the well number three. <coughs> I don't know, but one that looks the like the fake tree. tree. Yep. Yeah, the fake tree. <laughs> Somebody was there over two weeks, I believe, putting in 5G technology on sure. that cell tower. But they were there for, I mean, with man lift. Yeah. For yeah. two solid mm. weeks, or even more. Yeah. They yeah. they added all the green stuff is new. If you if you yeah. look at the tower, yeah. you'll see it. Yeah, it wasn't maybe, that long ago. Maybe the cell service at my house will improve. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. same my house. I'm well, telling you, I, I couldn't right believe now. that they were up there for two weeks. That, that, I don't know how tall that cell tower is, but it's way up yeah. there. Yeah, last, uh, the end of last fall, they spent quite a bit of time at both of these tanks. Um, other carriers improving their um, antennas to, to match the 5G. And there's something else, too. I don't remember what it was called, uh, but it's the next step. Yeah. You know, so while, while they yeah. were there, <laughs> they put up other antennas. And uh, you know, it was looking at the rules and regulations that they have set. They can, they can only remove and apply certain amounts within a certain span. Yep. So they went right to the max. And they, they had the maximum amount up there. So, yeah. I mean, it costs a lot of money. Like you said, the man left that goes out there, at the center tank here, they usually bring in a Shogunsky crane with a man basket, wow. just because of the distance from the perimeter fence to the catwalk, and then it goes up from there. So, you know, it's an expense to. Yeah. To maintain those, that's why the five thousand well, dollar. That's what I mean. If you removal. needed to remove it, <laughs> yeah. Not that you're qualified to move it. I'm not even nope. sure how one removes it when you're not even knowledgeable. What and then what do you it. do with it? Yeah. You know, or you recycle it somehow. I don't know. Well, you don't even know if you can. I mean, who knows what? Yeah, you can recycle the copper. What's in it? What's it made of? Yeah. So we'll so. definitely more to come on that. Okay. Um, we'll see where it goes. Mike is definitely going to review it. I'm sure. With the amount of information that's in there, that legal may have to get involved. Well, I'm sure we're not the first one who's done this, so maybe Mike knows some of the. That's what I hope. Um, town yeah. mm -hmm. administrator in another town that they can, you know, bounce this off right. through their MMA connection. Yeah, and if this is my concern, is that it's standard wording in these contracts, they may all have similar verbiage in there, and if it's the case, it really falls back on the towns to look at changing. You know, the wording yeah, of the contracts in the warm. future mm -hmm. to yeah. cover, you know, if this started back in 2009 or 2010, you know, maybe $5,000 wasn't that far off from what it would cost to have a crew come in for a day and wipe out some cables, but it's definitely not what it is now. Yeah, that sounds pretty cheap to me. Well, <laughs> it's so that they job. have stuff on the tower. They have anything at the base of the tower? They do. Yeah, they have. Yeah. They have a station they have a water. building? A uh, concrete building with a generator. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. They got yeah, it's like a, it's like a thousand. It was a rhetorical so question right, because I, I worked on a sprint yeah. place years ago. I remember building the stuff. It was mm. I, I we didn't build anything. We just provide the infrastructure. They came in and <coughs> wouldn't even let us in the building. No idea what's in there. Okay. Well, um, I think we need to set up. Dates. Next meetings. Yes. Uh, I don't have a calendar in front of me. Uh, I think we're looking at you know. Well, So we're looking at May. Um, so I had down. Uh, would it be the 10th? Uh, the 10th and the 24th. 10th and the 24th. And the 24th. And the 24th for our next meetings. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. So Tuesday, Tuesday, May 10th, and Tuesday, 20, May 24th mm -hmm. for our next two meetings. Sound right? That sounds about right. Let me make sure I, uh, yeah, I have that down already. The 24th, yeah, that's what I have. Okay, cool. That sounds good then. And um, as a reminder, Saturday is our town election, so if you live in Norton, get on vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right, Steve, you want to hook us up? I move to adjourn the meeting. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye.